All right, everyone, you remember the Bruin decision? It was that Supreme Court case last year where the Supreme Court said, well, there's a litmus test for gun control at both the state and federal level, and uh, reopening a bunch of cases in the process, by the way, and opening enough, uh, enough uh, legal avenues for many challenges against existing gun control. They said there has to be a historical precedent for any type of gun control that would have been accepted, you know, in the past in order to establish that there's a precedent for that legal power to exist in the present. Um, which means that all gun control effectively is nullified. Under a strict interpretation of the Bruin ruling, you would expect that the NFA and everything else would simply be tossed out completely. Guns would be totally unregulated in the United States, with the exception of making sure that the only people that had guns weren't criminal lunatics. So the founders would have, would have considered that okay, taking guns from criminal lunatics. In which case, you need to bring back the asylum system tossed out by Ronald Reagan, by the way, because eh, if a person is that uh, dangerous, they should be in an insane asylum. Danger to themselves and others. They shouldn't even be able to have a knife. Now, should they? We do have mass stabbings as well. Or that they're under 18. So they have the privilege of having a gun. If their parent says, okay, we're going to go shooting, that 14-year-old can wield a weapon. They can certainly use it for home defense. That's property rights. That would be fine under the standards <clears throat> of the uh, late 1700s. The founders would have been fine with that. But they wouldn't have said that a person under the age, well, then the age of 21, now 18, uh, would be a member of the militia. So the Second Amendment doesn't strictly uh, apply to them. Or they're a non-citizen. I would note that the same leftoid states that are attempting to nullify the gun rights of the actual militia are increasingly okay with the fact that illegal immigrants should be able to own firearms. That's very, very strange standard now, isn't it? And the fact is this, though. Colorado right now is moving to ban all semi-automatic weapons in the state. That is, that you could not sell or transfer them. This is clearly unconstitutional. You're effectively attempting to disarm people. That's the bulk of weapons that are sold or transferred today. Most people are not using FUD guns old bolt-action rifles and stuff. Are they fun? Yeah. Are they still useful? Hell yeah. An old bolt-action 308 will be perfectly fine for hunting. Are they good for home defense? Not if there's more than one intruder now. Right. It's, it's a little bit different in close quarters combat. Revolvers are perfectly fine. Are they at the same standard as modern handguns? No, they are not. I own a 22 revolver. It's a top break old HR sportsman given to me by my grandfather. My favorite gun, I'll never get rid of it for any price. I wouldn't sell it to you for five gram. Partially because of nostalgia and partially because it's so fucking fun. 22s are great, especially revolvers. Is it necessarily going to be great for home defense? No. I'm going to grab my Glock. Uh, <laughs> number one, it's a 22. Number two, it only carries nine rounds in the cylinder as opposed to 15 in the Glock 17. The 9mm is going to hit harder as well. Banning the sale and transfer of semi-automatic weapons makes no sense. Also, it's not going to be grandfathered in for the pre-existing weapons that are already there. So it's not like they don't exist. It's like you're trying to slowly phase out these weapons of war. Yeah, weapons of war. You know, the magazines have been around for a while, by the way. By the way, this would even ban 100-year-old uh, weapons in some cases. Wouldn't it count as a semi-automatic weapon if it has a magwell, like an old Krag rifle or something? I'm, I'm pretty sure those are semi-automatic. Never seen one, so I'm not 100% sure, but uh, <laughs> there were semi-automatic weapons 100 years ago. So, yeah, you're banning, what, 90% of the weapons that are on the market today? Modern shotguns, handguns, etc. So, effectively, you're telling the little lady who has an abusive ex-boyfriend... Yeah, you can carry the 38 revolver around, that's perfectly fine, but you can't get a modern handgun. You have to cock it back. Would this apply, by the way, to dual-action revolvers? Technically, that's a semi-automatic weapon. Well, shit, they've been around for a while now, haven't they? They're completely ignoring the Bruin decision. They're thumbing their nose at the Supreme Court of the United States, by the way, in so doing. This needs an immediate injunction, it needs to be taken to court, and SCOTUS really needs to do Bruin 2.0. They need to elaborate on their position and make it fundamentally, explicitly clear, Bruin means Bruin. What we did is we imposed a litmus test on gun control. We imposed a litmus test on gun laws. So, what are you doing? Uh, you're pushing these limits, you're antagonizing us on purpose and basically ignoring our decision. We're construing the Second Amendment as being fundamentally co-equal to the other amendments. If the Supreme Court does not 
tamp down on the states and the federal courts that are making these shitty decisions, and the state legislatures in Colorado especially as well. And Massachusetts also, I would say, banning assault-style weapons and all this bullshit. If they don't, they're effectively leaving open, under their own decision, by the way, every other amendment to be tampered with as well. Well, right to fair trial. Well, in our state, we've determined that a fair trial is that, uh, you know, we can just persecute you. We can throw you in prison for any reason. We've determined the right to a jury trial is, is malleable. In some cases, you know, in, in certain cases, we're just going to use a judge. You're not going to have a jury trial. You're not going to have that option. Well, freedom of speech, you know, that's all well and good. But we've decided there are certain things. Disinformation, fake news, you're not allowed to say that in our state. We're going to prosecute you if you do. If you uh, say anything that the state government determines to be fundamentally false, uh, you know, or, or you're just joking, you know, you're a meme lord or something, you can get prosecuted for it. Well, what's the difference? If the Second Amendment is understood as co-equal, which it is to the other amendments, what would be the difference? Oh, the right to privacy is great. Oh, women uh, having the right to vote. Well, yeah, but only certain women. You know, that class of women over there, they're a little bit weird, so we're not going to allow them to vote. Yeah, I know that slavery's been abolished and all, but, you know, a little bit of slavery is okay, right? Indentured servitude, at least, or something like that. The list goes on and on. Oh, states' rights are important, but, you know, states that weren't incepted in the original 13 colonies, uh, those ones don't count because they came later after the founding of the Constitution. You could make so many crazy legal arguments. The, fun the funny thing is, people don't treat this sort of law as being insane, but it's the same level of violation as all those other things I'm suggesting. It's exactly the same. It's a co-equal amendment. None of the amendments are subjugate to any of the others. The right to keep and bear arms, the right to have a well-formed militia, is intrinsic to the founding doctrine of the United States. The founders never would have countenanced any of the anti-gunnery that we currently have today. They would have said, having people prove that they're 18, so therefore a member of the militia, and that they're a citizen, and that they're not a criminal lunatic, is effectively the only gun control they would ever countenance. That's the way it should work. When you go to the gun store, you should be able to show an ID and walk out with a gun the same day. No waiting period, no limitation on the attachments, no limitation on the style of the gun. That includes automatic weapons, which, by the way, liberals out there, they are still legal in the United States. They just cost a lot of money because you can't manufacture them. They would, they would have had a huge problem with the idea of the government banning the manufacture and importation of, of weapons. They imported them regularly. Some of the rifles that were used in the Revolutionary War were built in Europe. They weren't even made in the United States. And they weren't from Britain either. They got guns from the Prussians. They got, you know, the, the Prussians came over, a bunch of mercenaries and shit like that. Hussars and shit. They fought in the Revolutionary War. They got guns from France, although they got a batch of experimental rifles that at one point malfunctioned and generally didn't work, and that battle was a bloodbath. Can't remember which battle it was. You can uh, say it in the comments if you're more up and up on the uh, Revolutionary War period's history. Uh, they, they were making bombs and crazy shit like that. The founders loved things that went boom. Uh, every single one of the founding fathers would want to own an AR-15. They would consider it, by modern standards, they'd consider it underpowered. They're like, well, where's my 50 cal, you know? <laughs> why have we, why hath we not developed a semi-automatic 50 caliber weapon? They, they do exist, it's just, you probably wouldn't want to use them because the recoil is so much you'll break your shoulder. Uh, they, they would want the fucking uh, howitzers and everything else under the sun. They'd want to own, you know, mortars. You know, they, they would love those. They'd love nukes, too, probably. Hmm. Prithy, I do believe that uh, if we deploy several of these weapons in these hills, we can flatten them out and then we can farm in there. You know, this mountain is shit, you know, bullshit. And get rid of the mountain and <laughs> farm your radioactive leaks or something. George Washington in a drunken stupor would probably make up such a suggestion. These people loved guns. They were, they were ubiquitous. They constantly carried weapons. They would have had no problem. I've, I, I literally wrote a book on the subject of gun control. Link in the description to my books blog. You can find it in the My Works section. Uh, in, in which I discuss this. The founders were acutely aware of the development of weapons over time. They were, they were aware of, of repeating rifles. They had semi-automatic pneumatic weapons, which, by the way, literally would be banned under Colorado's law. You know, the old Giordoni rifle would be banned. The Puckle gun, not really semi-automatic, but it's an, it's an example of a, basically an upscaled version of a single-action revolver. 
They had revolvers. Dual action doesn't come around till the uh, 1800s, actually, but uh, they did have them. They were just really expensive because they were uh, not interchangeable parts. They were hand-manufactured. It was easier to make muskets back then. They knew about all of these different designs. People act like the only things that existed back then in the late 1700s were muskets, swords, and bayonets, and pikes, and things like that. And that's all that they had. Bullshit. They had far more than that. They owned cannons in their own homes. Merchantile vessels typically had their own uh, deck cannons as well. At the very least, they had a couple of swivel guns, anti-boarding guns, with grape shot stacked in them. By the way, I mean, imagine what grape shot will do to a person at close range. It wouldn't be a pretty picture. They'd basically be just a pile of shredded meat at that point. Is, you know, you lost at sea and you use your deck gun, and then you get some free food. You can, uh, you can eat it, just like you would eat biltong. And fry it up on the deck, you know, with a little oil, and go over real well. Colorado is ignoring the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court needs to assert its hegemony. That's about all. Peace out.